the zone read. It's not what they do all the time, but he executes it to perfection right there for a touchdown for the Red Raiders. So you look at the numbers and you figure K-State's in great shape. 296 <laughs> through the air to 49 passing yards. And you look at the overall total yardage between the two teams. And they're only down by eight. And the special teams, as Joel mentioned, such a key factor once again for Bill Snyder's squad. Luckett back deep along with Thompson. Now, as Tommy Tupperville told Jim Knox, they can get it straight when it comes to blocking the field goals. Let's see what their adjustments are going to be. Lockett will take it from the goal line. Ben spun around past the 20, up to the 23. Well, a huge disparity when you talk about the quarterbacks, but we knew that going in. Colin Klein was never going to be asked to sit there and get in a shootout with Seth Deggy. It just wasn't going to happen. Deggy, very special. 25 of 34 for 296. After that pick six, early second play of the game, he's been sensational. So now K State has it. Klein and the offense on the field from their own 23. They started to look better offensively in the second 15 minutes of play. Ton of time for Klein, and he goes to the big tight end. Travis Tannehill with his first grab at a first down. So a bit of a surprise, throwing on first down to come out of the locker room. It was difficult for them early in the half in the first half to find some of those running lanes. And so early, you're already seeing a halftime adjustment from Bill Snyder. He says, let's throw it and try to get him out of that run box so that we can run it later in the half. The game takes it. For 15 to the 38. Good pocket protection. Shallow cross. It's Harper. And he's got another first down. So they've found some things, obviously, at halftime when they talked it over that they could do to, against the defense attack. And this is what they needed to do is get Chris Harper going. 19 catches for over 225 yards on the year. Over 10 on average, and you see his speed on that shallow cross. I like what Klein did with the ball placement, too. An opportunity to run after the catch. Big gain all the way to the 40-yard line. So two snaps, two passes for Colin Klein. Short ones, and they both work for big yardage. And uncovered. It's Lockett. A breakdown. Nobody accounted for lock at a gain of about seven. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, there's a reason for this. Talk to Bill Snyder right before kicking off the second half. He said, we got to open it up. He said, we got 95 yards total offense like the first half. We might as well go home. That's why they're throwing the football, guys. They need some big plays. And he also said they need to coach it better. It looks like they're doing that right now early on here in the second half. Okay, so a difference in philosophy for Bill Snyder to start the second half. Thanks, Jim. Klein throwing once again. Double clutches and a double move. And over his shoots, Chris Harbour. Well, the way it started out for K-State, they struggled, to say the least. First two possessions, Joel, they didn't get a first down. It started to open up, though. That third possession of the game, even though they punted, they ran the nine plays. Then they got that ball inside their own territory after the block field goal. They punched it in. And then a punt before the half, just kind of a run-out drive. They weren't trying to do much anyways on that one. It's a third and short. Third and about three. Single set. It's Hubert. Option. Wide side of the field. Klein breaks the tackle. Yeah, I think he's got the nose of the football for the first down. Boy, what an effort by Colin Klein. So Hubert was on the trail, but Klein was never giving it up. A couple of different times as he's running down the heel line, right down the line of scrimmage, you think he's going to get tackled. And then he cuts it up and dives for that yard marker and ultimately gets it. This is the toughness that we talked about at the top of the show. Terrific run by Colin Klein. And the drive that started back at their own 23. Now, little gadget play, lock it on the reverse. Man. Good recovery by Texas Tech after a gain of only three. Bush got over there. And the leaders into the locker room, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, John Hubert, he's going to have to find some success here in the second half. Tyson Hartman, he's been all over the field trying to make tackles, especially with how many snaps Texas Tech has had offensively. Spread the defense. It's rare when 
K-State's had a three wide receiver set. And they've got it now on second and eight. He looks one way. And now escapability. Middle of the field's available. Caught and Klein. First and goal inside the five. There's a reason he is seventh in the Big 12 in rushing. Getting up slowly, though, as Davis chopped him low to make the stop. Watch the decision making from Colin Klein. Tries to go left, then wants to throw it for a second time, wants to throw it for a third time before he actually tucks it down and runs and finds the green grass. Great decision making from Colin Klein. You know, normally you're 6'5, 2 and a quarter, you don't run like that. He's a long, lanky quarterback with good wheels. First and goal. First possession of the second half. Looking for a fade, corner of the end zone. Harper's got it. Touchdown, K-State. How about that throw? Let's go, Harper! It was a check at the line of scrimmage. He saw, Colin Klein saw the one-on-one -on -one Harper had on the outside, finds it, and then just delivers an absolute dime on the outside to Harper. That is as good as you can throw it right there. Wow. Colin Klein with more completions on this drive than he had in the entire first half. So we talked about the change in philosophy. With Bill Snyder, as he mentioned to Jim Knox, coming out in the locker room to pay it off. Cantelli makes it a one-point ball game. Got a good one going. What an impressive drive to start this second half. And adjustments made for the Wildcats of K-State. So through the air, K-State. It's dinner time. Welcome back to Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech getting ready to touch it for the first time in the second half. And smiles now for the offensive unit. They were frustrated in the first half. They opened it up to start the second half, Joel. Well, a tremendous drive, and it started with Colin Klein and his throwing ability. That's not what Kansas State hangs their hat on, but they did on that last series. Very effective. It'll be Marquez bringing it back. The wide receiver hit early and dropped right past the 20 at the 21. What a burger, what a play. Chris Harper out of the throw. The throw was just sensational, right where you wanted in that back corner of the end zone. We call it that back box. The quarterbacks, a lot of times in practice, will stand there with a trash can and try to throw touch passes to the back of the end zone, make it in the trash can. That was an easy six pointer there for Colin Klein. Tremendous throw. So now Deggy back out there after a very successful first half despite for the disastrous start. Man, hits it out once again. It is Torres. Uh, the possessions for the Red Raiders, I talked about it. His second throw of the game was a pick six. Well, after that punt, there was just a lot of scoring chances. Those two blocked field goals, the only reason that Kansas State was able to stay close. Deggy on the play fake and a wide open Adam James. Boy, he's grown into a tight end. I remember when Adam showed up here. Yeah, loving. Wide receiver, good speed. Now he's 6'2", 230, 35. And the leaders for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Eric Ward, a nice first half. And then Terrence Bullitt did a great job defensively, really disrupting what Kansas State was trying to do. Ton of time for Deggy. Man, coming back to help him out. The grab made once again by Torres. Those timing routes have been so effective for Texas Tech. Deggie's just throwing that right on time, very accurate. The wide receivers do a great job of running out of their breaks, Joel. Perfect combination. Now Crawford, who already has a career high in the first half alone. He had 72 yards. His previous career best was 47. And the opportunity, somebody's got to step up with Stevens out of the lineup the rest of the year. The speed is going to be DeAndre Washington. Another play fake on second down. Man, quickly out on the edge it goes. And Adam James has it once again. And he's right at the marker. There's a flag at the end of the play. A little play action, a run action pass. Going to boot the quarterback. He doesn't need to go too far because James is open right away. We'll see what's going on with a little laundry on the field. Pass interference by number 86 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Well, they're saying that Torres made contact while the ball was in the air for James. Didn't look like a pick play from that angle. He was the outside receiver on that side and was just starting to block a little bit too early before Adam James 
had him. Here's Torres in your screen. He's just going to start blocking too early. Gets into the cornerback there, Alan Chapman. Very easy call there for the official. It's at the 35 after the markoff, and now second and better than 20. Nothing doing. They thought they'd surprise and spread the defense as usual, but surprise K-State with a run up the middle by Crawford. Didn't work. So now third and forever. K-State trying to make personnel changes late. Will it burn them? Deggy over the middle and just off the hands. He was going for Zuzalik. The junior from right here in Lubbock. Great coverage by Ty Zimmerman, freshman All-American a year ago, closing in on Zuzalik and goes up. He's actually the one with the chance there. Zuzalik bats it away at the last second. You see Zuzalik's hand. That's the only reason that that ball wasn't picked off by Ty Zimmerman. This is going to be only the second punt of the game for Ryan Erksleben. Five minutes into the third. And a low line drive. But it'll be a fair catch call for just the same by Thompson. So we'll come right back to West Texas. Five minutes gone in the third. And K State gets the ball back, looking for the lead. 87 yards. Now the principal edge of the game and the dual role that Colin Klein serves for this team, Joel. Well, on that, those pass yards come more into effect in this second half on that first drive of the second half and throwing the ball very accurately. Colin Klein's career high in passing 146 yards and it came recently in the one point win 36 35 over Baylor. Offside by number 98 of the defense. It's a five yard penalty and it's still first down. That's Langley underneath tackle. What you saw Kansas State start to have success with is those crossing routes underneath. That's because Texas Tech was playing man defense in the first half and really loading the box against the run game of Kansas State. So a very good adjustment by the Wildcats at halftime. And all of a sudden, look at the formation, Joel. Two to each side for a Bill Snyder team. Opening things up here in the second half on a first and five after the mark on. It's Hubert. Nice run and a first down on a gain of seven. With an update, let's join Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joel, it looks like Texas Tech defensive secondary has got a little thinner. Number four, Derek Mays, right behind me. Hamstring injury. A strained hamstring. He has ice on his left hamstring right now, guys. He is out the rest of the game, and right now the way to Kansas State is starting to throw the football, they could use him. And their defensive coordinator, Joel, told us earlier this week he's their best cover corner. So he's on the sideline. A little thinner in the secondary, as you mentioned. Tackles up Hanson. A false start by number 70 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty and it's still first down. It's that miserable feeling you start going. He takes a couple of steps and realizes he's the only one out of the 11. <laughs> we thought they were snapping the ball. Left tackle starts trying to get after it in the run game a little bit. Feel like you're under a microscope there. Klein checking at the line. He's got a first and 15. And quarterback run all the way. Now what a run at that. Eight, nine yards for Colin Klein, who averages 94 a game coming in. So we talked about the decisions. Yeah, and, and this one was just a designed run, so he didn't have to decide to run this ball. They're just going to isolate John Hubert, the running back. Little guy is only 185 pounds, but he went up there and got a great block on Kulin Hubert in the middle of the, the field for Texas Tech. Good isolation play. Man, he calls that at the line, Joel, where he obviously saw something between the seams. It was available. Now Hubert bouncing out. They washed out the left side, and he's got a first down. Boy, Kansas State now with a shift in momentum. So despite the five yard mark off to start things off. Watch the block of number 37 Braden Wilson. He's who makes this play happen off the corner. You see Texas Tech try to blitz and he just smothers that blitz and allows Hubert the edge to get outside to the left. Now in the old traditional look with Hubert directly behind him. 
Out of the gun. On a play fake. Here comes the hit. Ball's free. And did Texas Tech take it away? K-State. Bottom Wait, of the pile. It is Common back. Klein. Wow. We, well, he's long. He's got good reach at 6'5". 6'5", 230 pounds. Pressure's coming from Smith on the edge, 94. He goes back inside, gets the ball out. What a fortunate bounce from K-State. Watch this ball bounce right back to Colin Klein, who didn't go back down all the way when Smith hit him. It's a loss of about three on second down. Delay for Hubert. Man, it'll be another loss. Good speed up front and staying at home. Texas Tech gets their second consecutive tackle for a loss. So Leon Mackey over on that side, turning them in. Texas Tech has been hurt playing man coverage in this half with those underneath routes. So you've seen him go back to zone, trying to keep everything in front of them. This is a perfect time to stay with that zone at 3rd and 15. Force Colin Klein to beat you deep. You see his numbers so far. That's usually for a game about 96 yards. He had 600 passing over the first five this year. Now, pocket protection underneath and well short of the first down to his big tight end, Andre McDonald. But as you said, in, in this territory especially, a punt's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for Kansas State, but Texas Tech did exactly what they needed to do right there. Stay deep and rally around the short pass. McDonald gets it. He's big, 6'8", 270. Rally up. Lots of black hats around the ball. Tackle him, force the punt. Zuzalek waiting for the door punt. Back at about the 10. Another good one. Hang time wise. Fair catch called for. And deep in their own territory, Texas Tech is going to have the ball when we come back in a one-point game, 28-27. Texas Tech leading by one gets it back inside their own 10 well this college football season Fox Sports proud to support Dream Foundation making dreams come true for adults facing a life-threatening illness there's no greater time to help those in need and when time is limited text dream to 41518 donate ten dollars and turn dreams into lasting memories time now for our Toyo tires driven to perform Colin Klein trying to do that well, and he's had to do it with his feet throwing the football a guy that's taken an interesting road here to Kansas State was homeschooled in high school out of Loveland, Colorado. Comes here and he's performed very well tonight. Exactly what they wanted him to do. Play clean, don't make mistakes, make some plays with your feet. And this was his best throw, the last touchdown pass to Harper to pull within one point. So Tech after the good punt by Door has it at the eight. And DeAndre Washington, their quickest back now with the injury to Eric Stevens. Gets about four on first down. Time for a Coors Light game break. Kevin Frazier, Mark is out on what's cooking. 17-7. Thank you, Kevin. Washington State, tough customer this year. Grab it a first down beyond the 20. And taking it in, it's Alex Torres. Paul Wolf, the head coach up there, gets his initial starting quarterback, Jeff Toole, back this week. But yes. they're facing, in my opinion, the best player in college football and Andrew Luck. Running the football, and good yardage out to the 29. It's Crawford back into the game, adding to a career best already. Wouldn't it be ironic if Texas Tech now runs the football while K-State tries to throw it? K-State starts to air it out. Now Texas Tech wants to run it every play, and they're having a lot of success against this Wildcat defense. Second and short. Daggy with the bullet, and a first down. Grab over there. Take it in by a Swindle. Well, coming into the game, K-State, or make it rather Texas Tech, seventh in the Big 12 in rushing. And let's face it, all these years, especially since Mike Leach started here, and now Tommy Tupperville taking over, they're dead last every year in the Big 12 in rushing. But they have been a force on the ground. Better than 170 yards a game, which is an, a major move for them. And boy, talk about a good move by a quarterback. Grab is made. Zuzonic's got it. It took a while for him to come across the field, but the patience of Deggy again. Yeah, and he buys some time with his feet. He's able to just move a little bit to his right and allow Zuzalik, who has one-on-one -on -one with Arthur Brown, which is a mismatch for Texas Tech to come open late. 
little delay action. Running back slams it. Not much available that time. And in there, that's the bullback, Kenny Williams. He's kind of their fullback, short yardage guy. True freshman out of Pflugerville. Burned his shirt earlier in the year, trying to get him more carries here. Nagy on second and about eight. Good adjustment by the wide receiver. Taken in by Kennard. So they're short of the first down by about two. Second grab of the game for Marcus Kennard. They go deep. And we talked about it. Nine guys caught balls in the first half alone. Went to nine different options. Joel Myers, Joel Platt, Jim Knox, and a first down. It's Kenny Williams making his presence felt. Just slams it. <laughs> Getting his way. I, I like the way he runs. Boy, for a young kid, like we said, true freshman, weighs about 215 pounds. He's only 5'9", but he gets in there and goes north and south. Nagy on a deep drop this time. And low and away. He's trying to get it to his back in the flat because the route he was looking at over to the near side was taken away from Ward. Well, and this is why it's so hard to play a true freshman like Kenny Williams. He's going to come out of the ball game right now, but they want to play with such high tempo that if you're on the field, you got to stay on the field. So if you put Kenny Williams in, he's got to stay there for about four, five, six plays. Now spread it completely. An empty backfield on second and ten of the 40. Ton of time, middle of the field, and contact. But no flat. So he's trying to get it to Adam James. Yeah, there was a little hand-to-hand -hand both ways. A little bit of contact, but I liked what Arthur Brown did. He targeted the receiver, and then he ran with him deep down the seam. Adam James has got to fight over that as the tight end because that's clearly the route that they've hurt the Wildcats with today. That's where Deggy is going to be looking for the rest of the night, especially in a situation like this, third and ten. Double screen. And does Douglas get it? Yes, he does. Down the sideline with a flag on the play. He's out of bounds. And was it with that block? Was it a hold for Douglas to be able to turn the corner? Right in front of the K-State bench. A personal foul, hands to the face by number 11 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty and replay third down. So Swindle, the senior from Oklahoma City. Swindle is on the outside. This is where you're going to see him. Where's his right hand? You see his right hand way up near the face now. It was on the corner of the shoulder pad, actually. That's a missed call by the official. It looked like it was on the face, but it was actually on the corner of the shoulder pad. It was a pretty good hold, though. It was, it was a good hold, but not hands to the <laughs> face. Third, Great for Kansas State. Third and 15 now. Negates the first down. Deep down the middle. Tipped away at the last second. Tried to get James. And now, is there a flag? Yes. The time into the tip by Lemur was perfect. But did they hit a defenseless man? Now, was it helmet to helmet? Late hit. A personal foul, unnecessary roughness by number 12 of the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Ty Zimmerman cited for the personal foul. It was actually number two, Tyson Hartman. Perfect. Ty Zimmerman was called, but number two, Tyson Hartman is coming in. There's Lamar with the great play. Wow. Yep. Hmm. He even turns away from that. That's a poor call by the official. He tried to avoid contact after he was committed to the play. Not much there, but a first down, and it's batted into the air. Latui was there, Volker was there, and it looked like Volker got it. Jordan Volker, the walk-on, top of your screen, just gets his hand up. Also, their tackle in there, Latui. These guys have been fighting hard all night to try to get to the quarterback. Volker's father, Randall, a three-year starter on the offensive line for the Wildcats. Back in the flat and dropped. Crawford getting ready to turn it upfield. Took his hand, have eyes off the ball completely. This is when you start to miss Eric Stevens because that's clearly right in his numbers and he knows it by his reaction. 
Well, if they don't convert here, field goal unit has not been friendly for Texas Tech today. They have had two blocks for 49 and 38 yards. And both by Gidry. Now Daggy trying to buy some time. And he'll just throw it away. That'll save the field goal attempt and avoid the sack of the loss. It's a good pressure. Once again, Meshack Williams flushed him out. So Rafael Gidry, who I just mentioned, and he's gone straight up between it, it looked like between the center and the guard on both occasions. Corona now. Can they get it straight? Did they make the proper adjustment to the blocking? It'll be a 47-yard attempt. It's on its way. Successful. They celebrate in Lubbock. Tech finally got this kick coverage unit, or excuse me, the field goal unit shored up. You see the cross of the legs inside? The lineman's legs crossed. That means they're down in Austin. Tyler Lockett has returned one already 99 yards. Yeah, it was a very competitive game. But it was in Austin. Not like that neutral site, you know, you're talking about there. Cotton Bowl for Oklahoma. Returnable from inside the five. It'll be the two for Lockett. And the coverage better this time. Still he gets it all the way out as he lost it to the end, but maintains possession. Out to about the 28 Academy Sports and Outdoors game break. Let's go to Kevin Fraser and Mark. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to remind the entire nation, Kevin, <laughs> but we know That's, too well. It's going to be a long night in Lawrence. Well, what about Oklahoma Sooners. State? They have, what, 56 at halftime at Kansas, wow. against Kansas? Wow. Just 56. Now out of the gun, first and 10 for the 27 climb. Little dump off for Hubert. And good maneuvering by Hubert. Boy, yards, yeah, yards after contact. That's what you call it. And a good job by Hubert. They have not been able to spring him for the big one yet. He got six on first down. First and ten line is brought by to you by Mazda. This is an important drive for Kansas State. They got to answer those points. Even though it was just a field goal from Texas Tech, they have got to answer this with a nice sustained drive by their offense. Blind. Good play fake. And he's got a great grab. Thompson reading it perfectly. But I like Klein's activity in the backfield as well. How about the catch by Thompson going up high? He's only 5'7". They're going to fake the zone read. Colin Klein actually ducks into the line and then stands back up and gives his wide receiver a chance. What a catch right there by Thompson. Wow, falling backwards onto his back, retaining possession as well. He saw it, read it perfectly, working against Cody Davis, the weak safety. Now Hubert dashes it. Huge hold up the middle, spinning. It'll be first and goal inside the 10. This young man broke off all of Ladanian Tomlinson's high school rushing records in the Waco area. And I said, they haven't been able to really get him loose, and he did that time. But this is what a running team does. They take advantage of the blitz. You saw the blitz there by Texas Tech. Finds the seam and Hubert gets north and south and makes them pay. Kansas State now completely turning the tables on Texas Tech as far as yardage in the second half. It'll be first and goal to the eight. And the ball to the ground. Klein again in a little bit of a miscommunication with Hubert. Klein pointing to himself says it's my bad. Any indecision by the quarterback in the zone read game is going to produce a ball on the ground. You see he tried to pull it a little bit too quickly there. Get too fast with the ball handling. Ball hits the ground. Bill Snyder not happy about that. Loss of a yard back to the nine. Inside of a minute to play in a wild third. Man-to-man -man coverage. They're coming on the blitz. Klein will keep it. Has a man to beat. And he's down inside the two. 
It'll be at the one third and goal. What a luxury when you have a quarterback who is that big and can run that well. Going back to the zone read, Klein doing an excellent job of reading when he can find a hole. You see right there, he sees a seam and he decides to take it himself. Gets up and puts himself in a much better situation for a third and goal. Hubert, Van Wilson, the fullback, stays in there. Play clock coming down, they just got it off. Short side option, he's in. Touchdown, K-State, and they've got the lead on the road once again on the final play of the third. How impressive was that drive by Kansas State? Capped by an audible by Colin Klein. He calls his own number. The defense over pursues to the left. He finds the seam. Touchdown, Wildcats. Six plays, 73 yards, three minutes off the clock. And that's the strangest part of it all. Fast drives, quick scoring drives, point after. It's perfect. So K-State leads by a field goal. Man, what a drive by Colin Klein once again. Two of their three possessions. Colin Klein has scored on runs. Through three, very good one going to the Big 12 tonight in Lubbock, Texas. End of three, 34-31, and you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back for the final 15 minutes of regulation in Lubbock, Texas. Joel Myers, Joel Flat, Jim Knox, our Sprint Unlimited update. This was the second snap of the game. A pick six, six by Nigel Malone. But then Seth Dagey really found a rhythm. He found Cornelius Douglas down the seam for their first touchdown. They got the running game going. The true freshman, DeAndre Washington, finds the end zone. And then a true freshman for Kansas State. He comes back. This is Tyler Lockett. And he takes it the distance. A 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. He turns on the Jets and gets in late right before the half. Seth Beggy finds himself in the end zone. But then in the second half, Kansas State comes out and throws the ball. Harper with a touchdown in the end zone. And after another methodical drive, a couple of plays made in the pass game, Colin Klein into the end zone. Kansas State offensively much more dynamic in the second half. Here we go. Start of the fourth, and it's going to be Marquez. Backpedaling's going to bring it out anyway, and he pays. He is the fastest on the offensive side. It didn't work that time. Our Geico quote of the game from the athletic director, John Curry, talking about his head coach, a constant in an unconstant world. Those who choose to listen, see it, it works. And that has a snowball effect. Those who didn't listen think, hey, maybe I should too. Well, it's worked for a long time. He has over 150 wins at Kansas State. 104. So back up for K State he is Jared Loomis. Loomis was the one who made the tackle. Here he comes, being blocked in. Ooh. He has snapped his head back. So good to see him. But what a shot. That whiplash effect. Back to Bill Snyder. Back for his third season. It's pretty amazing. With all the transfers they bring in, with a shovel action. And I talked about the fastest guy on the team, needs some touches. Bradley Marquez, at least the fastest on the offensive side. He's another 18 year old, first year freshman. He's from Odessa. And a great athlete. He was selected in the 16th round by the New York Mets in the baseball draft, signed with them, plays in the summer as a professional baseball player, comes back here to Texas Tech in the spring and in the fall. So a sensational athlete you can see why they try to get him touches as there was a penalty called against Texas Tech that's going to back him up inside their own 10. So the mark off keeps it at first down. But now it's going to be first and 17. Just outside their own six. Deggy. And safety valve is Crawford in the flat. So some breathing room, so he won't have to throw out of his own end zone. It's complete to the 13-yard line. Yeah, and just chip away. The first and 20, all you got to do as a quarterback, you just try to chip away in order to potentially move the chains. If you try to get it all back and one down, you find yourself at second and 20 or third and 20. So after the good kick coverage, the Red Raiders deep in their own territory. Yeah. 
breaking the tackle and getting the first down is Alex Torres. He's been a workaholic for Daggy tonight. And did he ever have some yards after contact? They didn't wrap him. This is Chapman, number three. Alan Chapman, the nickelback, who's had to play a ton of snaps, and he just doesn't wrap up. Going to be from the 27. Crawford goes low. As he lunges through for about five, out to the 33. It's a three-point lead for Kansas State. But this is very normal. We've seen Tech move the ball, play fast. It's just the fact that they've missed two field goals and been held the field goal on the last drive. Special teams difference in the game. It's complete. Little turn in. And it goes to Kennard, Marcus Kennard. Kansas State right now trying to wholesale change their defensive line do lots of substituting even though Texas Tech is not substituting 50 attempts for close to 400 yards now it's 38 completions the offense substituted and the defense did not have time to match up and clear the field we replayed the down I didn't see the offense substitute. I think that's what Tommy Tuberville right. is so upset with is that I thought it was just Kansas State trying to get off the field. It looked like the same 11 on the field for the Red Raiders. And, and that's when the umpire will get over the ball if they do substitute. So the defense has the opportunity. Diggy has it taken away. It's loose. And coming away with it is Kansas State. The opportunistic group once again, Meshack Williams coming around the corner. Another junior college player. There's 13 transfers in the two deep on the defense for Kansas State and Meshack Williams, 245 pounds, just beats the tackle with speed. Mickey Okafer and gets to the ball. Deggy a little bit careless with his mechanics. The ball goes into one hand right at the end as he's trying to release that football. Meshack Williams takes advantage. Turnover for the Wildcats. Now, how big is this? Short field from the 34. Second turnover of the game for Texas Tech. Hubert trying to bounce away. Man struggles for about two, three yards. So the last time Colin Klein had a short field, they capitalized. Took it away and got it to the 46. Well, you see right now why Kansas State sits in the top three in most defensive categories. They just force the offense to be perfect time and time again, and it's very tough to do for a college offense. Second and a little more than eight. It's up to the Red Raider defense now. Hubert waited. Spins it inside the 30 down to about the 28. So can they hold him to a long field goal try? Well, no after this third down. I love Hubert's patience behind the big offensive line. Watch him basically come to a halt right there and then find the seam to get north and south and finds positive yardage. Sets up his team for a more manageable third down. He can loss, can he, at 5'7"? Trying to locate him. So hitting half the third down so far and movement. False start. Boy, the mistakes. A false start by number 50 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still third down. And very few long mark-offs, as we talked about it in the first half, Joel. There's Nick Pitts. He's the one that just falters as Colin Klein looks like he's going to come up and actually change the play. That's frustrating for Kansas State. This is not the situation that they're great in at third nine. Colin Klein has to make a play. Well, he gets out of the edge. Can he run it? Out of the gun. Protection starting to collapse, and he's down inside the 30. Grab from behind. And making the play, Bush, Dartwan Bush. So here comes the long field goal try, and that's really all you could ask for your defensive unit to keep it a one-score game. Well, they haven't run onto the field yet. Bill Snyder looks like he's going to go for this. Now he's on the road. He's got a fourth and five at the 29. And will it be a timeout? He's walking down to the linesman like he's going to call the timeout. Here we go on fourth and five.
Got a timeout. No. They'll go for it. Climb on the quarterback draw. Won't get it. Red Raiders survive without allowing a point off a turnover. Blake Dees. It's hard to tell if this is a designed quarterback draw or Klein just thought he had green grass. It looks like he's actually looking for his tight end McDonald and then just takes off a hair too early. If he waits a second, McDonald was on a little five yard out route. He would have been open with man to man coverage. Did Smith influence him on a little twist? Because he was right in his face. Over the middle intercepted. Going the other way once again. Picked off by Tyson Hartman. So it's given away by Deggy on a second consecutive possession. He had only one interception and 17 touchdown tosses over the first five games of the season. He's got two already tonight. We've already seen Tyson Hartman play so well in the run game, he decides to jump a route. Watch him jump the route. We've seen him sit back how many times tonight? Let the ball carriers catch the ball and then rally up and tackle him. He finally reads the eyes. Dagey stares down the wide receiver. Hartman's there for the INT. So from the 22. And left side up again. A false start by number 70 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Second time on Hanson. Crowd affecting the offensive line and the communication for Kansas State. Left tackle just starts a little bit too early. Very frustrating. They're not built to come back from first and 15. They're built to stay on schedule. And it's been the five-yard markups most of the night, whether it's offsides or false starts. Zone read, Klein, breaking it at the line, may take it the distance, he's hit inside the five. First and goal at the two. Davis got over in time to save the score. Kansas State just out leverages Texas Tech. How about Hubert with the good block, pinning Blake Dees inside the defense. That's what Paul and Klein reads off of. There's the block right there, Hubert. Pinning the linebacker inside, Klein with a great cut off of it. Trying to make it a two-score game. That's 94 yards on 17 carries, right on the average for Colin Klein. Hubert trying to make a miss. And he lunges, he's down to the one. Boy, he's stretched, and he was on top of another body trying to get it in. I don't blame him. A couple of different jump cuts. <laughs> he's small. He was going backwards, and you could tell in his mind he got panicked and said, I can't take a loss here inside the five. And that's when he darted forward, but inside the one, the quarterback's 230. It's time for a quarterback sneak. Second and goal from the one. It is Klein. He should be in. Touchdown, Kansas State. So they failed the first time off a turnover. On the takeaway by Meshack Williams, they get the job done this time. Watch them just stay right in that formation. Texas Tech gets a little bit of penetration, but you can't stop that as a defense. Third rushing touchdown of the game for Colin Klein. Now an important extra point for Cantella. And it's a 10-point K-State lead. So inside of 10 left. And boy, what a premium on the next possession, next two in this game for Texas Tech. Turnovers leading to points. Tyson Hartman jumps the route and sets up his offense for a chance at a score. Colin Klein with the quarterback sneak. Ten-point lead for Kansas State. Trying to stay undefeated in Lubbock. All Big 12. It's going to be Marquez. Two yards in. And he'll down into the end zone. Time now for Academy Sports and Outdoors game break. Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen. What's going on? Oh, Kevin. The Texas Tech Red Raider fans just heard you. There's 10 minutes they, left in this game, basically, they and they want to come back on homecoming. Now, out of the gun. Crawford's not going anywhere. 945. 
The positive for the Red Raiders is their tempo, their rhythm, and how many snaps they can get if they click. I just think it's so amazing that a group with 13 transfers in the two deep can play such consistent defense. Now Deggy in trouble. And he's going to throw it away. Did he underthrow it enough for a pick? Yes, he did. Intercepted. Do you believe it? David Garrett's got it. He just tried to throw it away. Seth Deggy had thrown only one interception on the year coming into tonight's ball game. He's thrown three tonight. David Garrett, how about the body control? He gets two feet down. Good receiver. Kansas State so opportunistic with their defense. Their defense has set them up perfectly tonight. They were plus two in the turnover margin. Coming into today, they're plus four tonight. Haven't turned the ball over and forced Texas Tech into those turnovers. So nine and a half to play. Now can they chew up some clock in the process? Klein calling his own number and loses a couple of yards. This is the third consecutive drive to start. Off turnovers deep in Red Raider territory. The 34, the 22, and this time at the 28. Bill Snyder would like nothing else than to pull about three to three and a half minutes off this clock. If he could go 80 yards, you'd want six minutes off. But now just sitting at about the 30-yard line, he wants his offense to stay on schedule and stay on the field. They don't beat themselves. And tonight's game is a perfect illustration of the way they can manufacture things. Going to be Klein on the zone option. Reed weaving his way all the way to the 20. Short of the first down by two. When you put all three areas together, what they've done defensively and taking the ball away, but let's not forget about the scores defensively, first in the game, early in the game, and then the special teams, the kick return of 99 yards, and the two block field goals. Which, that's basically your defensive unit. Remember, that's just Rafael Kidry, a defensive nose tackle that's gotten in for those two blocks. So that defensive unit has set up Colin Klein and these Wildcat offensive players beautifully tonight. Klein with that, so over 100 yards rushing. And now needs two. For a huge first down, another two minutes off the clock. Hubert getting a block from Klein, and he's got the first down. Boy, he stops and starts as quick as you can find. I feel like they were having a tug of war in the backfield. <laughs> Who was going to take the football between Hubert and Klein? It looks like Klein wants to take this ball. I mean, they're way outside of the tackle box, and right there, this is where Hubert and that vision, he's going to cut all the way back across the grain Klein gets a block in there Hubert goes and moves the chain but more importantly like you said more time off the clock they could seal it here with a touchdown up by 10 already trying to get more points off a takeaway Hubert dashing inside the 10 down to the nine and if they do get a touchdown here it would be their third touchdown off of the turnover because the first point of the game for them came, as you mentioned, on the pick six by Nigel Malone. Texas Tech came into the game first in the conference and first in the country in terms of not turning the ball right. over. Only three turnovers that this offense gave up all year long. They've turned the ball over four times tonight to Kansas State. And, and while we said Kansas State was plus two coming in and plus four tonight, Tommy's team, Tommy Tuberville, they were averaging a plus two per game over the first five of the season. Klein on second at about five. It's Hubert. And chewing up the clock. Inside a seven to play. All three timeouts do remain, though, for Texas Tech. Another strength of Texas Tech that Kansas State has taken away. They were first in the conference, fifth in the country in terms of red zone scoring. Blocking those two field goals. Took advantage of the fact that they had drives that didn't come away with points. That goal, if they can hold them to three. With three timeouts on the board, you could conceivably get two scores. And I'm talking two touchdowns. If they can hold them to three. And it's going to be movement. So it's not going to be third and about three. It'll be third and eight. Tied end on the right side, McDonald. I think this is the time to let Colin Klein make a play. We've already seen him throw a beautiful ball to Chris Harper for a touchdown tonight. He's been singled up with Eugene Nebo all series long. Harper has. Harper, 6'1, 225. Eugene Nebo, only 5'10, 180 pounds. Six series at the top of your screen. We talked about Kansas State and taking it away, what it's done for their average drive start. The last three deep 
in Red Raider territory. Klein trying to get outside, won't be able to turn the corner. Good play on the outside. Coming up, it was Blake Dees, 18-year-old, another first-year freshman. It looked like they were trying to set up a shovel pass. Watch Hubert, he looks back for the ball. Colin Klein's got an option. I can run it, I can throw that underneath shovel pass. He decides to run it, but Dees, with great speed, the true freshman, chases him down and forces this field goal attempt. Trying to force Tech into two touchdowns now to get it. And I'm talking about the end result. Cantelli. It'll be a 31-yard attempt, and he pulled it. He pulled it left. Never had a chance. So there is a light in Red Raiderville. It's a missed 31-yard field goal out of the hold of Door, the punter. And Texas Tech has to do something in a hurry when we come back. Set them up in plus territory, and they went down and scored on that possession. Their offense got seven points out of that possession. So Gidry playing fantastic tonight for the Wildcats. And as you mentioned, either one goes. It's a one-score game for Texas Tech. They're not as desperate. Over the middle, he's got a first down past the 35. And picking it up, first catch of the night for Aaron Fisher. He has not been on the field all that often. For Kansas State, you can't get beat deep here. Do not allow a quick score. Force him to go the distance. Empty backfield on first down. Pocket holding up again and thrown behind his intended target. So Deggy struggling a little bit. It was Fisher again. Thought Hartman had a chance there for another pick. It would have been his second of the half. The ball was thrown behind. If he was targeting the ball there, he could have gone in there for the pick. Now on second and ten. Daggy. One of the few poor decisions. We've seen picks and everything, but usually he doesn't try to tuck it and run it. Yeah, that tells me that his clock is running a little bit quickly right now. You can see it in his eyes. He's trying to go too fast. Part of his game is being patient in the pocket and allowing receivers to come open down the field late over the middle. He's kept Crawford in the backfield. On third and ten. And underneath, coming over to help out his quarterback, it was Torres. He's been their most active receiver tonight. Moves the chains, stops the clock. Torres has been very efficient for Seth Daigie in Texas Tech tonight. He really came back to help his quarterback. From the 48, Bubble hasn't worked all night. How about this time? It's complete, and he's got about 10 to Douglas. They've, they've gone to it enough. That Make it nine. Lateral pursuit for the Kansas State defense, though, keeps it from moving the chain, so the clock will run. Arthur Brown, you see the speed from the Mike linebacker position. Second and a yard. He's got the first down. And he's got Crawford. His back just circled out underneath. It's to the 29-yard line. This is the point in the field where you want to take a shot down the middle of the field. Attack the safeties. Tyson Hartman and Ty Zimmerman with that deep seam route. Saves the clock. It's Torres, that's his 10th catch of the night. By far the most for Texas Tech. So I mentioned earlier, all the timeouts on the board for both sides. And now, Bill Snyder is going to take one off the board. That's a smart Kansas timeout. Calls their first timeout. Break the, the rhythm. Break the rhythm, give your defense a break, get them over there, get them some water, get them a breather. Sprint, all football, no limits. Only from Sprint. Joel Myers, Joel Flat, Jim Knox. Surprise. The biggest surprise of the Big 12 continues. Their storybook start to the season. Trying to go 6 0. K State up 10 to 10 points right now. And the Tech is driving. With all three timeouts remaining, 335 left. And with all three timeouts on the board, if they can score in the next 30 35 seconds, they don't need an onside kick. Second and six. Let's see their strategy, though. Keep it in the ground. Washington, their quick back. Man, he's got a first down. 
just inside the 19. Pretty smart play. They know that they can move the chains with that play. The clock will stop. And then they can snap it inside the 20 yard line. Fresh set of downs for Deggy. Looks one way, double move into the end zone. A hold, half the distance to the goal going for Torres. That was a horse collar hold. <laughs> he tried to get anything he could get. Alan Chapman in coverage there, number three. That stops it with 318 left. by number three of the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. Chapman with his right arm. There's the tug on the back of the jersey. Very easy call from the official. Puts so now, the ball at the six yard line. Got to do it in a hurry though. 18 seconds away from the three minute mark. First and goal. And it's complete. They're moving the clock. It runs. Torres has 12 catches now. Or is that his 11? Make it 11. Deggy now over 60 attempts on the night. Which is usually an equation that you're down, you're trailing. Crawford dives. Did he get there? No. Knee down. Inside the one. These are precious seconds for Texas Tech. They for, bounced down off the balance. Play. We're gonna run that zone read again. And he won't get there. Third and going outside of the one. More importantly, though, they're taking another minute off the clock. And because they were having to hurry, remember, it didn't give the replay booth enough time to look at that last play. They try to look at every play. The play for Crawford near the end zone wasn't able to be looked at. Fortunate for Bill Snyder. This was the first and goal snap you're talking about, Joel. And was he down? Yes, good call. A free game show tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on Fox. Well, now, fourth and goal. The fourth ranked red zone defense in the country has an opportunity to seal a victory for their team in Kansas State. Well, they need two scores. So it's going to be Corona. Where is Guidry? Account for him. Short field goal of 19 yards and a one score game with 232 to play. Now the decision for the onside kick because they had to use a timeout. So the long drive stalls. It's all in how confident you are in your defense, whether you're going to onside kick or not if you're Tommy Tuberville. Yeah, tonight's game on AFN American Forces Network broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces all over the world. 175 countries aboard ships at sea. And thank you once again for all you do and the opportunity for us to bring it your way. Joel Myers, Joel Klatt, Jim Knox, 232 to play. A seven-point game. Boy, those two missed field goals because they were blocked by Rafael Guidry. 6'4", 300-pounder, and Joel on both blocks. He went flush up the middle, barely touched. Poor blocking by Texas Tech. Clearly, Tommy Tuberville, as we talked to him before he went in at halftime, was very upset with his protection units for getting those field goals blocked. And that is the difference in the game right now. Looks like they are going to line up in a bit of a different formation. Kansas timeout. State's going to call a timeout. That's a good timeout by Bill Snyder. So they'll talk it over once again. Home. If they win this game tonight, they can find a way with 232 left. Bill Snyder is going to find himself undefeated against the Oklahoma Sooners at home late in the season. And all they have after Oklahoma is they're in Stillwater, then they've got Texas A&M, and then they're in Austin. So it gets easier. <laughs> <laughs> now, will it be an onside kick? Only one back. Thompson. The hands team out there for Bill Snyder. Here it goes, and it's popped high into the air. Loose ball, recovered by Texas Tech. Do you believe it? It was kept alive by Torres. Torres kept it alive. But the hop, man, what a job by Corona. It's covered and picked up. And what a play for the Red Raiders. Swindle 
It starts with the kick. This is a sensational kick by Corona. Look how high that ball goes. Hartman then has to wait for it. See how long he waits for it. And it was Torres that comes in and keeps it alive. Swindle with the recovery. And now the Red Raiders are in business. Offense back on the field. Down by 7, 231 to play. Deggy, can they recover? Crawford's going to run on first down. Didn't surprise anybody again to the yard. Torres, though, you know, jump ball took it away. That's it. Hartman's trying to go up and get it at its highest point, but Torres does a great job tipping it back. On second and long, short one, Torres. Clock runs. Huge third and four. First and ten line brought to you by Mazda. Plenty of time for Texas Tech. The last thing you want to rush into a mistake. Third and four. Man thrown behind his intended target. He was trying to get Ward. Ward has been very quiet. Not many touches in the second half. Well, he's been going up against Nigel Malone, who almost had his second interception of the game right there. He's already got four on the year. Kansas State can ill afford a mistake right now. You can see him playing very smart football. They don't want to get beat deep by it's, Seth Deggy in Texas Tech. This is the ball game, basically. Fourth and about four. It's a straight four-man rush. Deggy, a lot of time, and overshoots his back. He tried to get it to Crawford. Kansas State comes up with a stop. So with two timeouts on the board, minute 53 to play. It goes back to the Wildcats. How about the rush? They've been out there all night long. And Vi Latui at 280 pounds just does not quit and forces Daigie into a throw that he doesn't want to make. And Jolie had Crawford easily early and then went late. And all he needed was four. Crawford turns around, he's wide open. Away from Trey Walker. It's to the midfield stripe. Timeout will be called immediately. And now one remaining. Oh no, Texas Tech is not using it yet. I'd use it early. There's no question I'd be calling a timeout right now if I was Texas Tech. And I only say that because then you force Bill Snyder into decision if there is a third and long. Whether you're going to throw or run. Right. Absolutely. It'll be second. Long seven. Milking the clock. And they're going to take it down to a two, or two seconds yeah. or one on the clock. Inside of four seconds, there's no doubt. Quarterback run all the way. Colin Klein. And here comes the third down. Now you stop the clock. 54 seconds left. It's a long field if they don't get it. And you force a punt. So one timeout left for Texas Tech. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff play of the game. And it was special teams. No surprise there. And Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett really sparked this team because at this point Texas Tech had it rolling and the momentum goes all the way to Kansas State because of the tremendous vision and decisiveness of Lockett right now he's going to cut back find the lane and turn on the Jets and the true freshman finds himself in the end zone I thought it was a completely different game after that point because that's what kept them close to Texas Tech who clearly had the momentum so now two yards away from a win Convert on the first down, and it is over. There's no doubt this is Colin Klein territory right now. He is not handing this ball off. He doesn't even have Hubert in the back there. It's only Wilson, the fullback, and he's following Wilson right side. It's over. Colin Klein and K-State have the win and the first down. That was easy. Wow. Too easy on third and two in that crucial spot. Let's remember Tommy Tuberville has a very young defense over there. They're not very good against the run. But Bill Snyder brings the Wildcats in and ends a five-game losing streak to Texas Tech here in Lubbock. Haven't beaten the Red Raiders since 2000. And the clock winds down on a 6-0 start for K-State. So the surprise continues for the Wildcats. No one could have anticipated 
at the midpoint of the season, basically, they'd be undefeated, Joel. And how about the four quality wins in a row for Kansas State on the road for Bill Snyder against Miami, the game in which Ja'Cory Harris came back after the suspension, they beat him. They come back, Baylor, Robert Griffin III, he's getting all the hype, Kansas State beats him. Missouri comes to town, Kansas State beats him. Kansas State goes on the road, face a very good Texas Tech team who had only lost one game, they beat him. And for the fifth time in Bill Snyder's career at Kansas State, they are 6-0. and And I like the word you used in particular, beat them. Because they don't beat themselves. They do not beat themselves. They force you to make plays. Bill Snyder is one of the greatest college football coaches in history. The turnaround at Kansas State early and what he's done now in his second stint with the Kansas State Wildcats. Phenomenal. Let's join Jim Knox. Knoxy. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, congratulations. You told me at half, if you didn't get more than 95 offensive yards in the second half, you might as well go home. Well, you got 246 total yards of offense in the second half. You got to be extremely pleased with the way your offense opened it up and performed. Well, I, we had a couple of possessions down here going in that we could have put the ball game away with our offense after our defense did a great job of getting turnovers, and we didn't do it. So I'm pleased with the 240 yards or whatever it was, and I'm pleased that we scored some points, but I'm not pleased that we couldn't get the ball in when we had a chance down here to put the game away. And something you said you're pleased about is the defense. You know, Seth Dagey going into the game, only one interception. You guys picked them off three times tonight. Well, I thought, you know, we started the ball game that way and got the return. We've done that, I think, three times now in three ball games very early like that. I'm awful proud of our defense. They had, I don't know how many snaps they took, but I, it had to be 100 plus. And our defense was, I mean, we were tired. There's no doubt about it. But I'm proud of them because they fought back. They played. They made some plays when it was made a big difference. And we did some good things. We were inconsistent on in every facet of it, but we did some good things in special teams that made a difference. The kickoff return, a lot of it was good. Way to go, Coach. Congratulations. Appreciate the time, Joel. All right, Jim. Well, they're making plans right now for the ticker tape parade in the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas, after this upset. 6-0, Kansas State. Wasn't quite 100 snaps. It was 90, 96, but he was right on. And how about Viola Tui on the fourth down? The motor kept going. 96 snaps into this game, <laughs> forcing Daigie into a poor throw and a poor decision. Ultimately won the game for the Wildcats. So the